All right, so looping is one of the most powerful coding techniques that you can use inside of VBA. And these loops allows us to go through a set of objects such as worksheets, cells, and so on, and analyze them one by one. And inside of these loops, we can write code to perform specific tasks for these objects. Now there are many different types of loops inside of VBA, but the first one that we will be going over is one of the more common loops, which is the for next loop. And before we start writing the code for the loop, let's go ahead and insert a new module for this section. So inside of our VB editor, we can click insert, module, and let's name it loops. All right, so inside of the loops module, let's insert a new sub and name it for next. And the for next loop is used to execute VBA code a certain amount of times. For example, let's say that we wanted to loop through a certain amount of cells and insert a value into those cells. Well, we can use the for next loop to loop through those cells. We will be using a variable for this example, so let's declare our variable first. So we can type in dim and call our variable x as integer. And let's say inside of our loops and controls worksheet, we want to loop through a certain amount of cells and insert a value into those cells. So let's insert a new column before column A by selecting the column and then use the shortcut key Control plus or Command plus if you're on Mac to insert a column. And let's say that we want to insert a value into the first five cells of this column. So to start writing our for next loop, we have to start the code with for and then our variable name, which is x, equals to one, two, and since we want to make this loop run five times, we need to put five. And to close the for next loop, we need to put next x. So in order for this loop to work, we need to set our variable equal to something, which is one, and this is the starting position for this loop, and then it's going to run this loop five times. So between the for x and the next x is where we can write the lines of code that we want to execute each time. So if we are trying to insert a value into cells A1, A2, all the way down to A5, we can reference those cells by putting cells, open parentheses, and for our row index number, we can use our variable x. Because we want our row number to change each time we go through this loop. And since column A is the first column, we can put comma one, close parentheses, and we can just insert the value of 100. And that's it. So for x is equal to one, cells one one will equal 100, go to the next x, which is two, so cells two one, will equal 100, next x, 3, 1 to 100, and so on. So if we click play, cells A1 to A5 receive the value of 100. So that's the basics of the for next loop. But now let's apply the last row and an if statement inside of this loop to make this loop more dynamic. So let's delete column A. and comment out these lines of code and create a new for next loop. So first, let's declare our variables. So we can type dim x as integer and dim lr for last row as integer as well. And then we need to make our last row variable equal to something. And like I said before, we would be using the last row code when we start working with loops. And if you remember, the code is last row equals cells rows dot count comma one dot end 
XL up dot row. And for this example, let's say that we want to loop through all the cells within the width curve column. And if the student's score is greater than 90, then fill that cell with the color green. So the first thing that we have to do is create our for next loop. So for x equals 1, 2. And instead of hard coding a number of times to repeat this loop, we can use our variable last row. So this loop will only repeat until it gets to the last row of our data. And then we can put next x. So inside of this loop, we need to create a if statement to determine if the score is greater than 90 so we can highlight that cell green. So we can type in if cells, use our variable x, comma, and for our column index number, since we want to look in the width curve column, we need to put 5 because the width curve column is in the fifth column of our worksheet. Then we can put close parentheses, then greater than or equal to 90. So if cells x comma 5 is greater than or equal to 90, then cells x comma 5 dot interior dot color equals to vb green. And then we need to close this if statement by typing in end if. So we got for x is equal to 1 to the last row of our data if cells 1 comma 5 which is cell e1 is greater than or equal to 90 then for cells 1 comma 5 change the color of the interior of the cell to green and then go to the next x which is 2 and then place 2 inside of the x variable. Before we play this sub fully, let's step through this code to get a better understanding how this for next loop works. So if we press F8 on our keyboard, and we hover over the last row variable, we can see that last row equals to 14. So that means for x is equal to 1 to 14. Next line, so if cells 1, comma 5 is greater than or equal to 90, then fill the cell with a green color. And if you hover over cells, it will show you what's already in that cell, which is with curve. So if we press F8 again, one more time, well, it actually filled the column heading with the green color because it thinks that text value is greater than 90. So let's stop this sub and then change the E1 cell back to no fill and then instead of starting from 1, we can change this to start from row 2. Alright, so now let's fully run our sub and see what happens. It highlighted all the cells green that had a value that was greater than or equal to 90. So that's how you can use the for next loop. Now for this example, it could have been achieved by using conditional formatting. But you will come across a time where conditional formatting won't do it for you, but then you can use VBA to expand all the options that you can do and make your processes a lot more dynamic.